Technical design documents are often how a technical initiative gets started at a company. It's the bread and butter for senior software engineers. They're the ones that have to plan the initiative and how it will get executed. So a TDD or a technical design document includes the technical specifications and architecture of a to be reimagined software or a new software. So when you're given a new initiative to lead, your first step is often creating the TDD. And that's what we'll be doing today in Confluence. Big shout out to Atlassian for sponsoring this video. They're the creators of Jira and Confluence. These tools I've been using since I started software engineering. They're core planning tools to plan your technical initiatives, your epics, your user stories. If you're a software engineer, you've used Jira or Confluence. Their collaboration tools make it really easy to plan things across the stack and get feedback. We'll be writing a design doc for a currency converter microservice. So let's get into it. All right, so our first step is creating the Confluence page. I'm just gonna create a document. We're gonna create this TDD. We'll give it currency converter technical design document. And within this design document, we're gonna add several sections that walk through different components of the design. So we'll start off with an introduction for why we need a currency converter microservice. For this introduction, I'm just using a heading two. We can use a bunch of different heading styles. These are built in to Confluence, which is nice, and so you get some nice formatting. That's easy. You also have the basic things you'd have in any editor up here. We'll be walking through some of the things that are special to Confluence as we create this document that will make it easier to read, easier to understand. And the next section we're gonna add is the architecture overview and I can never spell this word architecture. There it is. Now I could add a bunch of text to try to describe the architecture, but it'll probably be easier if I add a diagram to do this. And so I'm gonna click the insert button and there's a thing called draw IO that will allow us to create this diagram. This isn't enabled by default. You have to add it through the Atlassian marketplace. Since I already have it enabled, I am just going to go draw IO diagram. And so this will open up and we'll create a just simple diagram that explains the architecture. So the first component in this architecture will be some kind of user interface. This could be an iOS app, this could be a website. There's gonna be some user interface that uses this. And then we're also going to have API gateway. And so this is an AWS Amazon web service. And this is how the user interface will essentially front end engineers will call an API. That API link will live in API gateway. And then within API gateway, we're gonna have a link to our con currency converter microservice. And this will have the logic that does the conversion from A to B. Now, in order to do that conversion, you need and exchange rate ratio. So you need to know like how many USD is how many Euro and that is gonna live in a separate component called the exchange rate provider. And so this will be a provider that will be linked with the currency converter service. And we're gonna have some double arrows And there's a lot of different tools in this that you could use and make you know, really, really pretty diagrams. Like you could, you know, if it's back end, you could color it this or front end or like, since we're building this service, maybe we color that, I don't know. But lots of different shapes. This is good for now, so we're gonna publish it. And then it will embed it right here in our Confluence document. That's pretty cool. Now under this diagram, we're gonna have details about each component. And so the first component is the user interface. So I'm gonna have another heading and we'll say details about this component. And then we'll do the same for the other components. Let's talk a little bit more about these components. 
The UI is pretty self-explanatory, but these three components, you might be wondering why are they separate? Why not just have one big thing that's like front end user interface and then back end all this other stuff? Well, the API gateway is our authorization, it's going to be our authentication, it's gonna do rate limiting, it's gonna do routing. We keep them separate to separate the concerns and so you only have one component dealing with like getting these exchange rates from all these financial institutions and then you have another service with the logic in it of like how are you gonna convert from A to B knowing you know what A is and you know what B is. Now another thing we're gonna add to this is Swagger. And so if you've heard of Swagger Docs, this is a lot of times how you'll share your spec with other teams. And so if other teams want to use the currency converter service and want to be able to convert from A to B, this is what you would give your front end engineers is a spec to your service. And Swagger gives you a way to display your spec that's easy to read, easy to understand. And while we could type a spec within Confluence, it's nice we have this extra component from the marketplace that we can use within Confluence. If this is not something that comes by default, you will have to search for it in the marketplace to add this. It is a macro that we will inject into our Confluence page. So let's do that and we're gonna add our Swagger spec in here. So here it is, I just pasted it in and this is just a format that Swagger has that will then render into a UI. So let's save this and we will publish this document. And on the publish, we can see our diagram and maybe we'll add a little more space there. And then at the bottom, we can see our spec. So let's take a look at these. We will provide two main endpoints. One is a convert endpoint, and so the UI front end people will go and use the convert endpoint to convert currency A into currency B. When they make the request, and so parameters, it will be a request body that they'll use, and this is what we would want the value of that to be. And so they're gonna send along this request body with a source currency, which will be a string, and we'll likely need to tell them like what strings map to what currencies, and then a target currency of like, okay, I'm gonna give you USD, but I want you to convert it into Euro. Then we will convert the currency, our service will take that input, convert the currency, and then send them back a 200 if the conversion was successful, and here we're sending them back an object with the converted amount. We could just send them back an integer, but a lot of times you will use a JSON object with a body in case you need to add extra things later. So, you know, maybe they also want the target currency in this body later on. So that'll be the basic first endpoint we'll have to our service, and they will be calling API Gateway which will then call our currency converter service, which then will call the exchange rate provider. And this will be a post. You could argue this could be a get because we're essentially getting the converted currency and we're not changing any backend data or modifying anything. Maybe that'll happen in our review. We'll get feedback from others. And the second endpoint we'll provide is a get request and it will have the endpoint or the location will be the URI will be at the exchange rates endpoint. It'll have no parameters, and this is if you wanna just get all the current exchange rates. We will return a 200 if it's successful, and the exchange rates, we just have an empty object here, but this is something we would need to add later on. And a lot of times when you're creating the technical design document, you're not creating a finished thing. You create an outline of it, and then as you have meetings with other developers, you slowly start to add to it until at the end it's presented, and you're like, hey, this is how we're gonna implement this. So it's a work in progress document until you're ready to implement it. So it might take you a quarter or two to just build this document, meet with all the people, have people agree on it, people will leave feedback, comments on it. Now let's go back into edit, and there is one more thing we're going to add to our document and that is the JIRA stories. And so we, because Confluence is owned by Atlassian, we can add JIRA 
components to this. And the integrations with Jira and Confluence are really good because they're owned by the same people. We are going to add a section. It's gonna be called Jira Story Breakdown. And this will be a list of the stories. And we can add in a Jira story in this. So let's search for a story. We'll search for con seven. And this is a user story where we want the engineer to add the conversion logic to the converter service. And so we'll add that in there. And with this, we get a link to the Jira story as well as the status of it right embedded here. We could also add the epics in this. And so if we wanted to use this design document to track our epics, to track our stories, to see how complete the epic is, we can do that in here. So let's search on two, and it happens to be in progress. But if you didn't know the key to your Jira ticket, you could create the user story or the bug right in here and link it right in here. Or you could go to recently viewed and see if you could search for it here. Lots of different options. All right, so we've created our technical design document and now it's time to ask for some feedback. So we're a team of one right now, but pretend I'm another engineer and I'm gonna leave some feedback on this technical design document, kind of put on a separate hat. And we're gonna read through this and see how it can be improved. There isn't a whole lot of detail with this document and one thing if I was reviewing this I would consider like what currencies are we going to be converting and so what currencies are going to be supported by our currency converter service and we can do that on the right and we can add like an inline comment and so if I wanted to leave a comment about a very specific piece I could say like what currencies and maybe I would tag like product I would tag like product people in this to have a better understanding of what they want because they're the ones designing this product. Another comment I would leave is this part where it's like the exchange rate provider is going to retrieve the up-to-date exchange rates. And then it's like periodically updates the rates to ensure accuracy. So periodically, what does that mean? Does that mean once a week it updates, once a year, once an hour? And like how is it periodically, meaning when we get a new request, we get the exchange rate, so it's like synchronous, or are we storing the exchange rate until it gets updated? And if we store it, are we doing it with polling? And so we every five minutes we poll our reliable source that has the exchange rate and we pull and every five minutes we update what is stored internally? Or is it asynchronous where the exchange rate provider has something set up to where when it updates, we get a notification and we get an update. We have something that's more event driven. When it gets updated, we get a ping and we can update what we're storing internally. I would leave a comment like how often is periodically now that's our technical design document. Planning is essential because once you start implementing, it's much harder to change paths. The more detailed and collaborative planning you can do at the start, the easier implementing the solution will be. And that's why Confluence is such a great tool. It has so many different features that help you visualize and document what you're trying to create. It also serves as a single source of truth for teams, keeping the info in one place, even if the original creator leaves the company. All right, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and thank you Atlassian for sponsoring. Be sure to subscribe for more videos and I'll see you next time. Happy coding.